Right. Looks like this is uh, start. Should we start? Yep. Well, welcome. So this is the project update for the OpenStack Charms project. So what are the OpenStack Charms? Oh wait. Hmm? Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I am uh, Frode Nordal. I'm a PTL for the Rocky uh, Stein cycle. Uh, and this is I'm Ryan Beisner. I'm one of the core charmers, core project. So, what are OpenStack charms? Um, OpenStack charms aim to be um, cost-effective uh, deployment and operations of uh, OpenStack at any scale. Um, and we do that. We've done that since uh, since 2011. We had an initial commit there, and uh, the project has uh, evolved over time to support open source exchanges and project splits. You know, quantum became neutron, and uh, all kinds of things has happened since then. Um, we had a wide set of uh, charms, uh, many of which uh, uh, we at Canonical uh, maintain and develop. But there's also uh, community contributed charms. Um, oh, I should probably. <laughs> and Stefan is sending you messages. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, just to, just to kind of expand on this bit here, um, the charms that you see up there. I think everyone on that slide are in the OpenStack Charms project uh, and are fully in the open. There. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I think so. Yep. So we don't, uh, on the Charms project, we don't necessarily main a one to one uh, list of all of the OpenStack projects. Um, you know, there are some that are community, community contributed, some that uh, have just been around a long time, some that are core. Um, and, uh, and then we've got third parties and vendor integrations uh, that, that generate a charm. Um, so again, this, the full list at the end, you'll see a link. Uh, and then of course you can query the OpenStack infra yeah. definitions to see all of uh, what we've got. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. And uh, yeah, playing with that, uh, each of the charms uh, are represented by a separate Git uh, repo in the upstream Garrett. So we'll, you know, you'll find all the code and everything there. Uh, Apache license, like the rest of the project. Um, so, um, just want to talk about uh, some of the surrounding tools. Um, the icon on the far left there is uh, Juju. Uh, Juju is a modeling software, uh, and uh, with that you model your applications, your machines, your networks, and your storage. You know, typically put that down in uh, some YAML uh, and reference which charms you want and uh, you can run a Juju deploy command and it will go deploy on whatever substrate you want. Uh, for physical machines we have a, a service called MASS, which is like in there, uh, Metal as a Service. Um, and it, it's, it uh, can basically run your whole data center of physical machines and uh, network equipment and, and how that works. And you can also point it at a virtual hypervisor to control virtual machines on your laptop for testing or, yeah. That's funny. The, the, so Juju and Maz, I mean, clearly the charms are, are uh, leveraging these. They're both open source. Um, and you know, we think very highly of them. Um, there's a different forum for that, I guess, probably for us to talk a little bit more about that after this, because we've got a, uh, the community uh, charms project that we want to move on to. So those two things, if you're curious of those and you've not used them, hit us after this, and we'll be glad to talk about those. Yep. yep. And uh, of course, we have the, the charms. Uh, charms are encapsulation of uh, the operation and uh, upgrading and maintenance and configuration of an, applica of an application. Uh, and those can be used for other things that are not OpenStack projects too. Um, but our OpenStack charms are specialized for 
you know, doing the HA you need for OpenStack deployments and for upgrades, uh, especially. Um, and of course, the OpenStack logo, you all know that. Um, and the logo on the far right is uh, LXD. LXD is uh, machine containers. Real quick, which we hands on with LXD, anyone, with or without charms? Cool. Be interested in talking more about those use cases, with or without charms? So we, we use that to connect, containerize the, all the parts of the uh, deployment. There are some things that are not containerized yet because of uh, uh, we need some dependency in the kernel and other stuff that we need to develop before it works, like yeah, yeah block devices and KDM stuff and things like that. But, uh, so the, the, the precursor to LexD, of course, was LexC. Yeah. Um, familiar with that, I'm sure. Um, what that says, is, or what, what I'm getting at with that, is the, the control plane and the database cluster and the message cluster and all of that um, with charms has been something that we've uh, containerized since Trusty, since 2013 14, right? So that's been uh, a very solid approach. And so we've just carried that forward with the LexD, where it, it just basically got daemonized. So that's been our uh, uh, containerized con control plane approach. Um, that's the bit that allows us to do that. Yep. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to walk through the year in the past, what, what we've been delivered to each uh, release date. So um, the Charms project uh, is a deployment project, so, so we don't actually release on the same date as the upstream OpenStack release. We, we often we, we try to align them, but... Uh, it's a trailing release, which I think is a two-week window. Yeah, so we try to release two weeks within the release. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, we're within two days, but... Yeah, <laughs> Post, faster. Uh, so for uh, February, we, uh, of course, supported the OpenStack Queen's release. Uh, that's also included in um, uh, Ubuntu Bionic, which gives it uh, five, year, five years long-term support. Well. After Mark's announcement yesterday, I guess we have to support it a bit longer. Okay. Yeah, I think there'll be. I think that uh, there's probably going to be some sort of further announcement on that. I guess I'm not. I don't know. Yep. But anyway, the charms will support Bionic as long as Bionic is supported. Yep. Um, and uh, for that release, we um, uh, did the Neutron Designate integration. Uh, actually, the Designate charm is one of the contributed to charms. It's not uh, done by the core team. Um, I think he's an employee in Canonical, but uh, yeah. Um, and we had the support for Bionic, of course. And we uh, untangled the requirement for using MongoDB with the telemetry stack uh, so that we can use yeah. Knocky instead. Yeah, so uh, to be clear, um, before 1804 and with uh, uh, like trust up to Trusty Mataka, I think you needed MongoDB. And then at that break, we switched to Knocky as that, uh, that collector. Yep. Uh, and in May, uh, we uh, did enablement for the Neutron Dynamic Routing support, uh, which allows you to talk BGP to your existing network infrastructure. Uh, we implemented encryption at rest uh, through Vault, which gives you on-disk encryption for, for Ceph and for Nova instance storage and uh, Swift, Swift yes. block closure yeah. yep. It's worth touching on that real quick. So what, what this, the, the three or four measures for this going into it were, can you afford to have a hard drive walk away and know that your data is safe? Can you afford to have an entire rack, a pizza box, or an entire rack disappear? Or can you, entire, can you afford to have an entire data center be compromised, stolen, moved, like a pod or a, a, a CO? And so the idea here is that you've got, uh, um, but we're using Vault uh, that has to be unsealed if it ever loses power, right? And so all of these things retrieve the, uh, the keys from this Vault, right? So if you reboot a server, as long as your Vault is still there and is still connected, then of course it can decrypt and boot. Um, and then if, if you just haul off with the whole server, and turn it back on, you're going to have to go through some procedures. So uh, that's all something that uh, we think is pretty cool. Um, basic feature for compliance and just general well-being of the data center. GDPR. That too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
he generally tends to undersell this BGP thing. <laughs> so like layer three traffic all the way to the instance at the, with the BGP speaker on the edge of Neutron. That's just a really cool like way to think about uh, a more modern uh, telco friendly OpenStack cloud. So that's what that does. It's pretty neat. It's very, um, it's very uh, neat, Frodo. Yeah, it's very neat. <laughs> I love layer three. Uh, <laughs> So as a general measure, um, that type of question, I think, uh, is the, the best answer is to look at the functional tests for the charm itself, because in that functional test, we're declaring a, a fraction of an open stack. In other words, it deploy just enough open stack to test that in a black box way. Um, so it's not a fully HA bundle, perhaps. It's not a full stack with telemetry and all of that. But what you'll get is uh, you know, Nova Neutron, Rabbit, database, and the BGP stuff, right? Um, so if you dig into the charm, if you get the repo and dig into the test directory, you'll see a bundle snippet inside there. Um, but we don't have one published, I don't think, into uh, like a, a charm store bundle or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, because I see the uh, charm itself uh, available, but neither included to a single bundle to see how Right. Yep. So. Uh, yeah, we would need to produce a, a distinct bundle for that. But again, you can derive the info with that fraction of a bundle and then just graft that into an existing one if you've got you know, an existing deployment. What you'll discover in there is what needs to be related to what, right, and what the configs are. Yep, yep. Um, okay. Uh, so anyway, let's, uh, we'll move on a bit, and then if you want to chat a bit of, uh, more about that, we can help you find an example. And I can point you at that directory, too, that hopefully should describe what you're after. Yeah. OK, um, we better move on. So, uh, and Vault, uh, which we use for the encryption at REST, uh, is, uh, has also has support for uh, TLS uh, certificate management. Uh, so we've added that to, uh, to most charms, uh, which gives you S TLS throughout the deployment on the control plane uh, without having to issue the certificates one by one, it does it automatically. Uh, you just give it the CA certificate and shit happens. Oh, oh, yeah. Wrong word. It does. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, yeah, full 1804 support. Good so things happen. Good things happen. <laughs> um, and in August, uh, obviously, the Rocky support. Um, and we flipped the uh, default for um, for Ceph to use BlueStore as storage uh, after validating uh, uh, that we are com confident in it working OK. So it won't eat your data. Uh, and we have uh, uh, Mimic support. Uh, and we did the Keystone Furna token support. Um. Yeah, so for, um, I think it's, Queens and later, you can configure on the charms, Fernet or not. Yes, that's And correct. then for uh, Rocky and later, of course, it's required, and it's it just you, you, it is Fernet at that point. Yeah. So that gives you an upgrade path. You can change token yep. priority before upgrading, and uh, to yeah. have less less problems in the upgrade. Yeah, indeed, our recommendation would be to reconfigure the charm for Fernet tokens at Queens prior to an upgrade. I think yep. we've published that. Yeah. If you do both at once, yeah. it may still work, but yeah. <laughs> that's not the path we test. <laughs> um, and now we are here. Uh, this release is going uh, out uh, as we well, we're doing the release in these days. Uh, yeah, it's all staged and, and ready to drop, I think, within the next one to two business days. Yeah. Um, and with that, we are uh, adding uh, Nova Cells version 2. Um, the, the driver for that is uh, we see people having clouds with uh, more than um, mm -hmm. it computes or hardware series. Yeah, well, so yeah, you know, we see message bus gets overloaded and such when you get into the two, yeah, two, three, of, two three hundred yeah, compute nodes, computes. Uh, depending on the load. Now, you, it may you may seem like well, Nova Cells has been around a little while. It started coming in at Pike and Okada, right? Uh, so we've been tracking it a while. Um, several releases ago, I think 18 months ago, we changed the, de the deployment topology of the charms. Mm -hmm. Under the hood, the entire time, you were getting a, a single cell cloud with cells v2 
enabled anyway, which made it easy for us to then say, surprise, you can now extend that and add cells once we uh, went through and did all of the validation of that feature. Um, so you're well staged to consume that now. Yeah. So there are, there are a few large clouds out there. Yeah, uh, sure. We have the uh, And we're adding the support for the Octavia load balancer. Um, Octavia is now the re reference architecture for load balancing in OpenStack, and uh, the, the, the existing one where you install HAProxy in a, in a namespace on the gateway is to be removed soon. Uh, I, I don't know if they have a set, uh, set date, but uh, yeah. yeah, so it's preparation for, for that. Um, and we're doing uh, Vault integration for Barbican. Uh, which is kind of a requirement for the Octavia. Yeah. So yeah. you have a safe place to store the TLS secrets, private keys. I really like this one. Um, it, you know, we've looked at, at Barbican and we wrote a, a preview charm uh, about two years ago and did kind of a, a soft HSM back end to kind of simulate an HSM. Um, the the Castellan work and the work in Barbican, we, we've got some commits out and we're carrying uh, that work in the Ubuntu Cloud Archive until that lands, but it essentially uh, enables uh, the use of Vault as a software-only secure backend for Barbican rather than spending however much you, you might need to, uh, to purchase and maintain HSMs, uh, which we uh, would like to see supported as well, but uh, you know, I, I just don't have that hardware in our lab and the first person that comes along uh, that wants that, um, I think it would be cool to also add that HSM hardware backend uh, as a plugin for Bolt for uh, Barbican. Yep. Um, and we're adding a series upgrade. Uh, the meaning of that is uh, uh, the ability to uh, upgrade the uh, op operating system underneath the deployment. So if you are, uh, have machines on Trusty, you can upgrade them to Senial uh, and from Senial to Bionic. So this is um, part of the main enablement to to our greater upgrade story. Yeah, indeed. It kind of formalizes the story that you've heard this week. Yep. We should probably cruise on. I think we're, yep. we only have a few minutes left. Okay. And uh, the cosmic cuttlefish support. Yeah. Uh, so future. Um, uh, we are um, well underway with the Python 3 work. Uh, we met the goals for the Python 3 first uh, thing by enabling, uh, you know, all all new code will not pass the gate unless it's Python 3 compatible. Um, we're, we're also changing the runtime for in all the packaging. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how far we'll come with that. So it's kind of a, it, it, there are two fronts for Python 3. There's the payload of the charm, which is Nova Neutron, Cinder, whatever it is upstream that's packaged and distributed. And then there's the Python 3. Uh, code that's the charm itself. Right? Mm -hmm. So we've started working on the Python 3 conversion for the charms themselves uh, a year and a half, two years ago. It's basically complete. There's a few more things that we need to polish. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're working um, with upstream individual projects to raise and file and fix bugs um, and help uh, move along the, the payload part of that, the upstream bit. Um, and we're converting all our functional testing over to a framework called Salsa, uh, which is also kind of because of the Python 3, at least that ignited it, yeah. because our existing uh, functional test framework is Python 2 only. Uh, so this is, is a new mm -hmm. library for, it's basically to test any charm. So uh, it's not specific to OpenStack, even though we have branded it as that. Today. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Well, that'll, that'll loosen up a bit. Um, so on the LexD side of things, we have a charm called LexD that's a subordinate for the Nova compute charm that allows you to uh, uh, spin up uh, system containers with LexD uh, from Nova. And uh, we'll just rename that this cycle to the Nova LexD charm mm -hmm. um, because there's another uh, LexD charm that might come along that's a, a, a more generic use case for clustering. Uh, real quick, I'll, I think this one's mine. Yep. Uh, so we're doing some work in uh, both Juju and uh, the Charms to enable us to put Neutron Gateway, Nova Compute, and Nova LexD into LexD, uh, which allows for a denser story with convergence. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, putting out some features in the Ceph Charms. Uh, again, those are not an official Ceph. Um, well, Ceph is not part of OpenStack, but it, the Ceph charms are part of the OpenStack charms, right? So we maintain and develop those. We'll be putting in uh, Rados Gateway site replication, uh, RBD mirroring features into those charms. So this is all for 1904. 
Um, we're, there, there's a lot of, uh, in, in the enterprises, we see a lot of uh, proxies and uh, egress limitation environments. And so there are things that you can do today. Uh, we've got a few areas we're going to make that better. Um, the, the bottom part here is really something I wanted to make sure we, we touched on. Um, we're working on um, putting out artifacts and templates and examples to make it easier for third parties, for contributors, for uh, vendors to uh, integrate with existing OpenStack charms. And so we'll be putting out, uh, uh, for example, the, the generic uh, iSCSI sender backend, of which there are 100 vendors or something like that, right? So this will be uh, pretty much a template sort of thing. They all essentially look the same as far as the integration. Um, Trilio is someone that we're working with as well for the uh, uh, backup restore features. It's a pretty cool feature. Um, I think we're at time. Yep. And uh, so we'll leave this up for a bit. If you guys uh, have any questions, uh, we'll be hanging around. And um, if you miss us, uh, lots of orange shirts around and, uh, and uh, other community folks. Does anybody have a read on the time? Is that really where we are? Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Rhoda. Thanks, Ryan. Cheers. <laughs>